Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Pratik and in this video I am going to tell you how you can quickly create a database on AWS using the RDS service. I will also be explaining how you can connect the database on RDS to your local system using my SQL Workbench. Before I go ahead with the video, I would like to tell you all that this video is a part of end-to-end -end data analytics project article that I am writing on my blog. This article is for someone who is new to data analytics and want to want a hands-on experience on industry-like project. I will provide the link to the article in the description below. Do not forget to check that out. I have also created videos on how to start a virtual machine on AWS and connect that to the local system using Git Bash and how to put a script on cron job to run on hourly basis on the virtual machine. You can find the links to these videos as well in the description below. So as you can see that I have already logged into my AWS console, the first thing we would like to do to start our database is to go to RDS service. So this is the RDS dashboard. Here you can see all the KPIs related to RDS. Like you can see all the instances which are running. Uh, you can see the allocated storage out of 100 TB and all other KPIs which are available. So the first thing we would like to do here is to go to create database. Now when you go to create database, the very first option you get is if you want to choose uh, go with the standard create or you want to go with the easy create. So I will uh, suggest you guys to go with the standard create uh, because there you get a lot of flexibility to choose what kind of database do you want and what kind of connections do you want. So the next thing is you can go for any kind of uh, database according to your requirement, but I will go with the MySQL and once you select MySQL, it will ask you which version of MySQL do you want to use. So uh, I'll go with the latest one, which is as of now 8.0.20. The next thing is to choose the template. We don't want a production or development or testing environment uh, database right now. We will just go with the free tier uh, environment. And the next thing is I need to name my instance which I want to create. So I'll just name it as Pratik test. And next thing is we need to provide credentials for this instance. So uh, these are the credentials which you will require when you are connecting to this particular database or instance from uh, any other source. So uh, this will be admin and I'll just, I'll leave this username as admin and I'll just provide a password here. I'll confirm the password and then it will ask you what instance size do you want. So since we have selected the free, uh, free tier here, we won't get a lot of options. There is only one option available for free tier that is one GB RAM. But if you're not going for uh, the free tier one, you have multiple options available to choose from. And then you are supposed to select the storage which you want to allocate to this database. So it can range from uh, 20 GB to 16,384 GB. I'll just go with the 20 GB as of now. And I will enable the auto scaling option. Next is what kind of connectivity do you want? Virtual private cloud. So uh, I'll go with the default one uh, because we do not have any other option and creating a new VPC doesn't really make sense here. But yes, one thing you would definitely want to do is you should select this as yes if you want public access or not. Because if you're not selecting this as yes, uh, it will be really difficult for you to connect this using Workbench, connect to this particular database. The next thing is, uh, it, is it, it also asks me what security group do I want. So I'll leave default, but I will also select launch wizard one. This is basically to help you with the connection which you are going to make. If you are not going to select this, then uh, you'll have to go to that default uh, security group and then you'll have to uh, provide access, the inbound and outbound access to your uh, IP address, to your uh, system from which you're trying to connect. So that is a bit of tedious task. So it's better to just, you know, um, provide access to different VPCs as well, security groups as well. In availability zone, I'll just leave it as it is and port number 3306 is just fine. I will leave it as password authentication and that's it. But yeah, there, there is one more thing. Uh, you can create an initial database name. So I'll just give it a name of Pratik and um, 
and yes i'll leave other selections as default and then i'll just go ahead and create this database so as you can see i already had an instance which was running and that instance was prateek and uh, as you can see the status of this instance is available because it is running and this will show you what is the cpu usage which is going on right now and how many connections does it have so currently i have not connected any other sources to this particular database that's why it is showing as zero connections and this is the latest instance which we have created prateek test uh, the status of this is creating still and it is going to take some time meanwhile we we can just go to workbench so uh, so you will see that in aws console we have now created the database and uh, so the first step is done the second step is basically connecting this database to our workbench so if i go to workbench i already have a connection here i there, there is a database which i have already hosted on aws and this is the database where i have uh, basically i am storing the the air pollution data which i am collecting so if you go to the article for which i have provided the link in the description the project starts with collecting the data uh, using an api it is basically early pollution data which i am collecting using an api and uh, using python script uh, i am running that on cron job on every hour and that data is being collected and it is being appended in this particular database so if i just show you this database um as you can see that uh, let me just show you an example of uh, data which is getting collected so if i run this you can see that uh, this is how my data is being collected you know i'm collecting the data uh, country state city and station on station level i'm collecting the data and this is being collected on hourly level and there are different uh, pollution id metrics like you know there are 6 to 7 metrics like pm 2.5 10 no2 nh3 and so on uh, and i have been collecting this data since last uh, year 14th of october 2019 so i have collected a good amount of data if i just try to check you know how much data have i collected till now the rows of data which i have collected so this is a pretty big query because uh, i have been collecting this data on hourly basis for an year now so it is going to take some time meanwhile we can just go back and see if our okay the status is still creating i'll just refresh this to see if there is any update in the status no it is still showing as creating so we can go back and we can see uh, okay we haven't received yes so we have received the output for this query and as you can see it has crossed the data i have collected is uh, over 1 million rows so uh, this data you know i will be uploading it on kaggle public data set as well and i'll be sharing it sharing the link on my article so if you want to uh, check out this data and do some analysis on this data you can definitely check that out and uh, this data is approximately when i uh, when i transferred this data in csv format uh, this data was coming out to be approximately um, 1 gb 1 or 1.1 gb of data so let me just go back to this again let me refresh it and let's see if we have this thing no it's still not created it is taking up some time but yes we do have the endpoint uh, here and we have the port number so these are the two informations what we need in order to connect it to the database so i'll just copy this thing the endpoint name i'll go back to database i'll go to home i'll create a new connection there uh, i can name the connection as anything i will name it name it as youtube test the host name this is where your endpoint is supposed to go the port number is correct this is uh, this is the port number what we have 3306 so we can go back here 3306 username if you remember the username which i gave was admin and i will store the password in the vault okay now i can go ahead and say okay and i can try to connect to this data now let me just go back and again refresh this and see if this is running or not
Mm, so it has been created, but it is making a backup right now for this particular database. It's taking some time to connect, probably because our database is not yet ready or yeah. So we are now connected to the database which we have created, the new instance on AWS. And as you can see, I created a, a database there named as Pratik. So we have Pratik here. We don't have any table or views as of now, but the database is created and we can go ahead and create you know, any tables or whatever we want to. So this is basically how you can create a new database on AW, using AWS RDS service and connect this to the, uh, to the workbench. And uh, I hope you find this video useful. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments below. Uh, so I'll just sign off. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.